All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Jay Bear, who is in Indiana. How are you doing, Jay? I am fantastic. Nice to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. And Jay is one of the world's most uh, inspirational marketing, customer experience, and customer service keynote speakers, Hall of Fame speaker, MC, New York Times bestselling author of six books, internet pioneer, seventh generation entrepreneur, and the founder of five multi-million dollar companies. And in your spare time, you... <laughs> do you have spare time? I, the, I don't have a ton of spare like time, but I, but I do collect tequila in my spare time. So I do that. Ah. Wow, that's good. Yeah. Excellent. Well, it's better than if you just drink tequila all the right, time. Right, right. Well, I, I pretty much just drink it, but if I say I collect it, it sounds classier. <laughs> that's Excellent. Truth. All right. Well, I'm here in San Diego as usual. And what we wanted to talk today is this concept of talk triggers. So, hmm. Jay, maybe you can explain what is what is a talk trigger? There's a new stat that says that 82% of business-to-business -business CMOs believe that they will be competing primarily on the basis of customer experience by next year. And that makes a lot of sense because when, mm -hmm. when, you, sort of, when you sort of set your ego aside, the fact is in B2B, essentially whatever you sell, somebody else is selling something that's pretty darn similar. It's mm -hmm. really difficult to win on feature set or win on price, at least over the long haul. And so what we've discovered over time is that experience is the thing that sort of tips the balance of the scales. At the same time, we have fallen into a trap over the last, I'm going to say 30 or 40 years in business, but more particularly in B2B, where we have come to believe, unfortunately incorrectly, that competency creates conversation. That if you just run a good business, your customers will notice that and talk about it. But that's not actually the way people behave. We know how important word of mouth is in B2B. In fact, word of mouth influences 91% of B2B mm -hmm. purchases. So fundamentally everything. But, but running a good business isn't enough to create that customer conversation, to turn customers into your greatest sales and marketing advantage. Look, I, I don't know everybody tuning in. I probably know some of you. But I know this for sure. Nobody has ever said, hey, let me tell you about this experience I just had. It was perfectly adequate. <laughs> nobody, nobody ever says that because it's a terrible story. And, and running an adequate business doesn't create stories. So a talk trigger, quite simply, is an operational choice that you make in your business that is designed to create customer conversations. Mm -hmm. It is something that is packaged in such a way that it delivers an experience that the customer does not expect and therefore gives them the raw materials to tell your story over and over and over, which makes your marketing work better and make your sales process work more smoothly. Yeah, and, and I think, and I mean, I 100% agree with the whole customer experience thing because I, you know, I do believe, yes, I mean, we have a CRM that we feel is highly differentiated, but um, to, to your point, a couple of years ago, we made the conscious decision internally here that we really wanted to focus on customer experience because in the space that we happen to be in, the, the traditional customer experience wasn't very good to begin with. Right, right. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I really, I, I like that idea. So how does a company start to focus on, on customer experience and creating these talk trigger moments? Yeah, you have to understand, first of all, what customers expect of you. And mm -hmm. especially in marketing, we think we do. We're like, well, that's what I do. I'm in marketing. I understand what mm -hmm. customers want. Nah, you really don't. Mm -hmm. You really don't. Uh, it, we used to, I'm old enough to remember, as are you, the days when marketing really did understand customers because they had no choice. Yeah. We didn't have data. We didn't have analytics. We didn't have spreadsheets. We didn't have any of that. The only way you could really do your job as a marketer would be to leave your office and go interact with customers. Yes. We don't do that anymore. Marketing's ass is nailed to their chair. And we run reports and say, well, this CSV tells me this about our customers. That's not really the same thing. So what we have to do is first, and this is sort of the process that we use at my consulting firm, Convince and Convert, mm -hmm. when we create talk triggers for brands, is, is we first interview three groups of customers. 
we interview new customers, we interview longtime customers, and we interview lost customers. And mm -hmm. what we do in those interviews is we talk through the customer journey. How did you become aware of the solution? Uh, did you try the solution? Who did you talk to about the solution? Did you go to the website? Did you talk to a salesperson? Did you get a proposal? Did you negotiate the proposal? Did you get a contract? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we say at each of those kind of major inflection points, let, let's say you got a proposal. Yeah. What did you expect would happen? Mm -hmm. Because you see, what we're trying to create is an expectations matrix. Mm -hmm. Expectations versus inflection points. Once right. you know what customers expect, you buy by definition, know what they do not expect. And if right. you're trying to create word of mouth, it has to come from a place that is unexpected. I'll give you an example. Uh, many people uh, are probably familiar, or at least uh, tangentially I've heard of, the company Uber Conference. Mm -hmm. Uber Conference does free uh, calls over the internet. There are, I don't know, like a dozen companies that do the exact same thing. I mean, the right. exact same thing. The same more. thing. They, however, have a talk trigger. They have made an operational choice that creates customer conversations. What's the worst part about a call? Waiting on hold. It's the worst, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're sitting around, you're blowing your day. It's always some terrible, smooth yep. jazz. You know, yep. you're like, this isn't even a good <laughs> song. <laughs> Their CEO, Alex Cornell, is a very funny uh, and talented musician. So they mm -hmm. wrote a custom on hold song, which is hilarious. And it's about sort of the drama of waiting on hold mm -hmm. and everybody's late to the call and you think there's not going to be a call. And then you drop off and they show up. It's hilarious. That is the song that all of their customers get. Now, if you go to Twitter or G2 or any other place where word of mouth is engaged in, in the B2B space, and you just do a search for Uber conference plus on hold, mm -hmm. you will see hundreds of people saying things like, the only reason I use Uber Conference is because of the hilarious on-hold music. What they have done is taken something that is incredibly mundane, the most yeah. mundane thing, which is mm -hmm. the on-hold music. They know that yeah. customers expect almost nothing of that, and they turned it into something that is noteworthy and a conversation creator. Every single business in the world, small, large, B2B, B2C, doesn't matter, can, and in my estimation, should make that kind of choice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I think it's a very good point because, in fact, I mean, that's a fantastic example. But, in fact, what we have seen, and to be honest, you know, uh, software and SaaS and is, is one of the more guilty of it is that, we're actually doing the opposite and reducing the amount of, of contact points and the amount of opportunities to surprise a customer to the point where that's why it's become so easy to swap out technologies because they because you don't have that connection anymore. That's such a good point. We don't talk about it nearly enough that, that yes, we are making it easier to buy. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, we're making it easier to switch. Right. It, it's, it's a package deal. Right. And, and I don't know what the answer to that is. You know, I, I don't think we're all of a sudden going to say, let's put up more roadblocks to customers mm -hmm. where they have to talk to more salespeople before we take their money. I don't think that's going to happen uh, no. for a number of reasons, but there is a happy medium there, I believe. Uh, and, and that's what I'm, what I'm trying to, to get at with, yeah. uh, with the talk triggers premise is that, look, I'll give you an example. So I have a talk trigger for myself. Big surprise since I wrote the book about it. <laughs> Uh, I do a lot of public speaking. I, I probably do mm -hmm. 60 or 70 events a year. And my thing has always been, not today on this broadcast, but but uh, I am the crazy plaid suit guy. So when I'm right. on stage, I have uh, lots and lots of very crazy plaid suits, different colors and shapes and stuff. People would always notice it and say, well, it's a really interesting suit. But I decided to take it one step further and make it an experience and turn it into mm. a talk trigger. So the way it works now is that when a meeting planner uh, asks me to come give a presentation, about a week before the event, they get a link to a website that we built, which is dressjbear.com. <laughs> On that website, all the suits are listed, paper doll style. They pick mm -hmm. which suit they want me to wear to the event, and then it goes on my calendar so I know what to pack, and I show up wearing the suit that they selected. Now, since we started doing this a couple years ago, at least 85% of the time, they mention it in the introduction mm -hmm. of me to the event, and the meeting planners talk to all the other meeting planners about, oh, it's really cool, you get to pick out a suit, 
look, that's not rocket science, man. It, I just right. made an operational choice to do something different. It's just a mm-hmm. choice. Here's another choice. Everybody has a business card. Yeah. This is my actual business card. It's a metal bottle opener. Yeah. I've had these for 11 years now. These cards are $3 a piece, which is obviously more than a regular business mm-hmm. card. However, people come up to me all the time at events and say, Jay, I got your card seven years ago at some event and I still have it. It's in my golf bag or it's in my boat. And I'm like, look, man, if out of all of your possessions in the world, (laughs) you can (laughs) tell me on command where my business card is. Yeah. My work here is done. Uh, Yeah. yeah. You know, just just, just choose to just choose to be different. Same as lame. Yeah, no, um, what I like about that is both the, all the examples you've given so far from yourself and even from the, uh, the Uber conferences, as you said, is these aren't huge undertakings. These aren't no. like massive strategic initiatives. Let's go. No. These, are just, these are just smart, clever ways of introducing some level of human connection, right? That's it. And actually, ironically, what we've discovered in the research and all the work we've done on this topic is that when you make it too big and sometimes B2B has this, this tendency, it's like, okay, here's what we're going to do guys. We're going to take all the prospects for this quarter. All right. And we're going to, we're going to have a drawing and uh, one of the people is going to win this drawing and they're going to win a Caribbean Island or whatever. Right. They just like, <laughs> like, okay, we're going to get attention by, by shocking and awing the customers. Yeah. And like, I understand how that happens. It makes a lot of sense inside the mm-hmm. conference room, but in the real world, it actually doesn't work. And it typically backfires. When you give customers experiences that are too grand, it actually doesn't create conversation because mm-hmm. it creates suspicion. If right. people say, wait a second, they don't have an island to give away. What's the, <laughs> what's the catch? What are the terms and conditions? You're right? Does this mean I'm going to have to buy an enterprise license? Whatever. <laughs> Nobody wants to tell their friends about that deal if they think it might be bogus. Mm-hmm. So the, the truth is you don't want to overshoot the mark because it actually doesn't work that way. Yeah, and I think that as part of that, I, I mean, I totally agree with that because, um, yeah, you think, okay, yeah, well, number one, the odds are I'm not going to win anyway. And as you say, you know, then you think Caribbean Island, are there tax implications to winning that? <laughs> right. um, exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but I agree with you. And I think and I think what where people miss it, and I think now is that there are so many different parts of the customer journey, right, from prospect through to customer, that there's a lot of, there's a lot of points along that journey where you could intervene and just do something memorable that doesn't have to be big but will be memorable because most people don't do it that's it that's it It, it, look it's got to be different enough yeah to be worthy of a story but not so out there that people don't want to tell the story because Mm -hmm. it makes them seem weird or untrustworthy right so you're kind of looking for that goldilocks zone Right, yeah. right in the middle. Um, and, and look, this isn't easy. I don't, I don't want to make this seem like sure. you could have this done in an hour, right? Because if it was that easy, you'd already have it done. Mm-hmm. This, takes, this takes work, right? You, the right way to do it is to interview customers, as I mentioned, come up with some candidate ideas, uh, do some segmentation and test one of the talk triggers and say, all right, mm-hmm. we're going to expose every nth customer to this talk trigger or only customers in this location or only customers of this product, et cetera, and then measure the talkability of that idea. And if the talkability is sufficient, you roll it out across the business. I mean, that's how we talk about it in the book and the steps that we use to create these kind of things. It's not just like, let's have beers and brainstorm. Uh, right. It's not quite that easy, right? There's a real methodology. Like word of mouth is the most important thing in business for which nobody has an actual strategy. So what I'm trying to do with this book and the work that we're doing is say, here are the ingredients for a strategy. Now go make one. Don't, this right. is too important to leave it to chance. Yeah, because I mean, as you say, I mean, some of the examples you've even given, I mean, there's a thin line. I mean, you could get cheesy very quickly or irrelevant yes. or something. Or as in the immortal words of Spinal Tap, you know, there's a thin line between clever and stupid. Precisely. That is exactly, exactly right. And that's one of the reasons, one of the key uh, differentiators of a talk trigger that we mentioned in the book is that it has to be relevant, right? It has to Mm. make sense in the context of who you are. For example, Uber Conference, their CEO wrote and performed the song, right? Right. It it is, it is in their DNA. It's his song. Mm. 
I was a plaid suit wearing guy long before I had a website to pick the suit. So yeah. a talk trigger is not going viral. It's the exact opposite of going viral. Going mm-hmm. viral is doing something random, typically, yeah. that creates conversation over a period of a day or two. A talk trigger is something that is strategic and relevant that creates conversation every day, week, month, quarter, and year, right? It goes, it goes well into the future. There is no expiration date. Uh, mm-hmm. on the talk trigger. And so it's it's actually almost the the flip side of of going viral, even though both involve conversation, of course. Yeah, that's a great great way to sum it all up, Jay. So um, fantastic conversation. So talk Thanks. triggers, I really uh, encourage everybody to go look at the book and uh, and Jay's other work. So before we go, Jay, do you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you? Yeah, you bet. The book is available all the places and ways that books can be procured mm-hmm. these days, including audiobook read by myself and my co-author, Daniel Lemon. Would love for you to grab the book. I think you'll like it. Uh, there's a talk trigger for the book. Doesn't really surprise anybody, probably. Mm-hmm. It works like this. If you buy the book in any format and you do not love it unconditionally, I will buy you any other book that you want, period. You want a first edition Bible? We'll figure it out. Uh, so far, we've had tens of thousands of people buy the book, have redeemed two. Two people have said they didn't like it, and I, and I bought them a different book, and I will make the same offer uh, to all of you. If you don't like it, you let me know. My email address is prominently displayed in the book. I will buy you any other book. So there is literally no risk. And if you want some more uh, tidbits, if you go to talktriggers.com, there's tons of free stuff there. There's infographics, presentations, videos, research, all kinds of stuff on the on the premise that uh, that you can dive into. Fantastic, and we've also had uh, Daniel on the show as well, so it's He's great to best. get the other the other half. All right, listen, Jay, thanks very much. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.